Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop, where you never know what we're going to be working on next. If you're not too careful, you just might learn something. All right, we're back. And uh, I've gotten everything put together, uh, enough to where we can run the motor and put the, uh, you know, break that new cam in. Uh, now there's a few things we gotta do first. Uh, of course, I've already put coolant in it, <clears throat> but I uh, wanted to do the oil on camera because I needed to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, flat tappet camshaft engines, which most of your old engines are. Uh, back in the day, uh, oil used to have a lot of, motor oil used to have a lot of zinc in it. And they ended up taking the zinc out uh, for emissions and the environment and all that. Well, now the problem they found is, is these older engines uh, will wear out the camshafts prematurely without that zinc additive in the oil now, uh, or at least uh, for the break-in phase. So, uh, of course, we're, we're going to put our oil in. Uh, but we're also going to use a uh, zinc additive. Now this just happens to be Lucas brand, but I'm sure there's a bunch of different ones out there. And what that does is that replaces the zinc that's missing in your modern motor oils. And uh, for the break-in period also, we just use straight 30 weight nothing fancy no synthetic nothing like that uh, for the break-in we run straight 30 and after 500 miles or so you want to flip it over to a uh, uh, a synthetic then you know you're good but you want to break the engine in with just straight 30 weight and this zinc additive so let's get cracking here we'll we'll start with our We'll start with our zinc additive first. Get that in there. Is this E V O O? Oh, never mind. This isn't the Little Rochetta show. I got confused. <laughs> it's E V M O, extra virgin motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> A little humor there for everyone. Uh, only those watching this video who are foodies will get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I did a time hop over to MacGyver's workshop to help yeah. assist filming. Yes. I'm usually in the food area. <laughs> yes, my lovely wife, Miss Tammy. Uh, whom our viewers know from the uh, our foodie side of the things uh, the La Rochetta show channel she's helping me today is working the cameras and all that it's always great when I can have somebody man in the cameras because it makes for a whole lot nicer video because usually I end up forgetting where the camera is and or all you're doing is looking at my back I think I actually had a viewer post a comment about that oh oops <laughs> hey, what can I say I said oops <laughs> now we're a little over five quarts here but that's okay All right, so the next thing, now that we've got our oil in here, we go ahead and, uh, and check it. Uh, of course, we know it's got five quarts and a, about a pint in there, but uh, next thing we need to do is we need to prime it. Now, um, the uh, best way to do that is with an old distributor, uh, that the same kind of distributor that your motor uses and we just take the take the drive gear off 
So we can spin the distributor independent of the engine and it goes down in there in the bottom of the oil pan on the end of this little uh, hexagonal shaped rod here and we'll spin the oil pump and make it pump oil throughout the engine and get oil everywhere so we're not starting the motor up dry. Now this distributor turns clockwise, but some turn counterclockwise. Alright, so here we go. Oh, it's a bit hard to turn now. Pressure coming up. Okay. It'll take a minute probably. Where are we at on the pressure, dude? Okay. Okay, that'll do. <clears throat> All right, now we know we got some good oil pressure here. Let's go ahead and pull our fake distributor out. And you'll notice that some oil will pooch out of there. And that's perfectly normal because there's an oil galley or a passage right there. And the distributor is what kind of you know, seals off that passage. So that's why we always want to use a, an old distributor to prime our lubrication system. All right, so now what we want to do is find our top dead center on number one here to line up our distributor I might have to go over here where my box is and we'll bump her around and watch for our timing mark what I'll do is I'll turn the motor here just a little bit and get set on zero. Alright. Now what I've done is I've marked on my distributor where number one is on the cap. And most of your distributor caps have have a little number one cast into the cap too. But I wrote it there in Sharpie where it's nice and easy to see. Now we know we're on top dead center. And of course, you know, your engine always fires before top dead center. So what we want to do is line that, line that rotor button up with that mark. And make sure you have enough room to advance and retard your timing. Usually, usually you want the your vacuum advance facing away from the engine. And since the the rotor turns clockwise, advancing the timing, you'd rotate the distributor like so. And to retard the timing, you would turn it this way. So that'll work. And uh, the other thing, too, you got to remember and watch for is that the distributor goes all the way down in. And it's not all the way in because even though we have the distributor gear lined up properly, we're not lined up with the oil pump. So I'm going to go get my ratchet here and I'll manually 
turn the crankshaft until it comes around and you'll see the distributor drop in. Now, like I said, we're already lined up on the distributor gear, so it doesn't matter if we turn the engine. But we're going to turn it so that the distributor will rotate and line up with the oil pump, and you'll see this distributor drop in the rest of the way. Sometimes it'll take a time or two, but you'll get it. There she goes. Now she's in. Now we'll put our hold down bolt in here. That's going to be a 13 millimeter or half inch, depending on which side of the pond you're on. And I'm not going to tighten it too much. I want it to stay put, but I think we were right about there. And we'll our distributor cap on here. Now we'll we'll be doing some work on this distributor. I know it looks kind of dirty because I haven't cleaned it up, and made it perfectly pretty yet. But that's because we're going to uh, we're going to recurve the mechanical advance in this distributor, but that's going to be for a, another video. And then we'll have to put our spark plug wires on there, and since I was wrote it in here, we'll know where they go. All right. After it got, it seems like it's been forever, but uh, uh, it's a moment everybody's been waiting for. I know the moment I've been waiting for, for sure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crank this thing up and uh, break this camshaft in. And what I'm going to do is uh, crank it. I've already primed the carburetor, so it should bump right off. And we'll get it going. I'll bring the RPMs up. Uh, see them here on the timing light and uh, uh, think with the timing, kind of dial the timing in. I just kind of have it somewhere right now to where it'll run. And, uh, and we're going to let it run for 30 minutes. Fuel. Ignition. And start. <laughs> 